Okay, welcome. We're going to continue our discussion of hyperbolic geometry. Uh, in section 9.3, we talk about these things called omega triangles. And the idea is that if you have two lines that are parallel to one another in the hyperbolic plane, then uh, they never meet, of course, in the hyperbolic plane. That's why they're parallel. But if we extend the hyperbolic plane to have these so-called ideal points, then we can say that those two parallel, parallel lines meet at an ideal point in the extended hyperbolic plane. So <clears throat> this notion of this hyperbolic plane being extended to be even a little more strange uh, compared to our usual experience in the Euclidean plane is uh, a little bit scary, honestly. Um, and we're not going to spend too much time obsessing over what's going on in the extended hyperbolic plane. We're just going to use the, the, the convenient um, way of thinking about these ideal points so that we can justify calling, uh, calling these uh, things triangles, which really aren't triangles at all other than that they consist of three lines. Um, that meet at two different points. So if we have two lines that are parallel to one another and uh, some line segment that connects the two, then we get what we call an omega triangle. And the omega uh, simply comes from the name that the points, the ideal point usually contains. So here we have uh, an omega triangle, which consists of two parallel lines, B omega and A omega, and some line segment connecting A and B. And uh, we're, we're only using the extended hyperbolic plane insofar as we want to call this a triangle, even though it violates nearly everything we've come to know and love about what a triangle should be. Um, but in this section, we prove uh, some interesting theorems about things we can say about these omega triangles, uh, even though they aren't triangles in the way that we're usually used to thinking about them. Theorem 9.3 gets us started. It says that Pasha's axiom holds for omega triangles. So if we have a, an omega triangle AB omega, uh, Pasha's axiom says that if a line enters the interior of a triangle on a side, then it must exit the triangle on one of the opposing sides. And if it enters at a vertex, it must exit the opposite side. So that turns out to still be true. It requires some proof. So even though it's called an axiom here, um, we are far enough outside of that context that we need to prove what's going on. So we will prove that, for instance, if our line enters the vertex at, enters the triangle at B, uh, it must exit off of A omega. If it enters at A, it must exit off of B omega. Um, if, and this is kind of a weird way to think about it, if it enters at the omega, meaning that the line is parallel to A, a omega and B omega, then it must go through the side AB, and so on and so forth. We're going to cover all those cases. We'll prove it in the next pencast, uh, but Pasha's axiom is still going to hold for omega triangles, and that's, uh, that's a pretty neat result. Theorem 9.4 uh, is just some technical statement that we need to prove uh, as a means of proving theorem 9.5, which is the really interesting result uh, that if you have two omega triangles, AB omega over here and A prime, B prime, omega prime over here, then we can talk about what it, what it would mean for these two triangles to be congruent, namely that the angles at A and A prime are congruent and the angles at B and B prime are congruent and the side AB has the same length as the side A prime, B prime. Um, of course, A omega and B omega and A prime omega, B prime omega are sides of infinite length, so you could say that those are the same. Um, but theorem 9.5 says if we want to establish uh, the congruence of these, all we need is to say that the sides of finite length have the same length, and either the angles at B and B prime are equal, or that the angles at A and A prime are equal. And so having the, knowing that the sides are, the finite sides are of the same length and that one pair of angles is equal is actually enough to give us that the other pair of angles will be equal. Uh, theorem 9.6 gives us yet another congruence result. If you have two omega triangles, A, B, omega, and A prime, B prime, omega prime, then it would be enough to show that the angle at A is equal to the angle at A prime and the angle at B is equal to the angle at B prime, and that would actually force the sides, AB and A prime, B prime, to have the same length, which is really kind of mind-blowing.